Hello everybody, this is Dr. Lori with Heal Yourself Beautiful and I'm here to give you another one of my introspective and thoughtful blogs. Um, just getting to let you into my life so that I can let you know me a little bit better. You can understand why we created this beautiful woman's community of Heal Yourself Beautiful. And so um, today I just kind of want to do a little dedication. I was having a moment where I was was reflecting today and I had a, a thought um, as a hummingbird. I keep seeing hummingbirds and so my hummingbird, um, if you haven't heard of spirit animals, my hummingbird is my spirit animal that reminds me of my grandmother and it seems to appear at the most interesting times in my life where these hummingbirds will just appear and what does it remind me? And, and, and that, that's what this blog is about. My my blog today is kind of a dedication to one of my heroes. And I have lots of heroes, but today my blog is dedicated to my grandmother. Uh, my blog is dedicated to my grandmother, my grandma Anna Prouse, who will choke me up just thinking about her, but one of the most beautiful, amazing kind, caring, compassionate, um, tender, tender loving um, women um, that I've ever had the pleasure of having in my life. She is the reason why I wanted to go into a career where I could help people, that I could help people learn love, learn how to love themselves, um, learn how to love others, because my grandma Anna Prouse from North Dakota um, loved everybody. She was kind. And her and my grandfather, Valentine, yeah, his name is Valentine, which is pretty cool, they were married and had the most beautiful love affair, the most beautiful love story, because they were married, and they were married for over 65 years. And my grandfather passed before my grandmother, and I knew that when my grandmother, as she was dying, and she said she could see her, her sweet Valentine, we knew it was time and that she was passing, and that those were the moments that she was going. But my grandmother, ever since I was a little girl, I was grandma's little Lori. I was a sickly child with my asthma, kind of picked on, you know, kind of the run to the litter. And for some reason, my grandmother just, I, she thought I was a bee's knees. She loved the little runt. And so I, I got to spend some time with my grandma and grandpa during the summers. I, I, I would go stay with them for a week at a time. And I would draw pictures. I loved, I had a little art thing within me and I would sketch pictures of my grandma and grandpa or I love coloring, coloring books and just sitting and listening to their stories. My grandmother never used a cookbook. She, every recipe she had was from her head and she would make great things like, can you believe this, fried bologna? She would dip pieces of bologna in some kind of a batter and then she would deep fry it and it was something that you just put in ketchup and it was like heaven on earth. We ate macaroni. She'd make macaroni with butter. Have you ever had that? Straight old macaroni, elbow macaroni, and we put butter on it and then you eat it with ketchup. I know that sounds terrible. But we would do saltine crackers with butter. She kept butter on a container. And we would do saltine crackers and we would put butter on them and, and cold cuts. And that was our snack. In fact, at Grandma's house, I'm surprised we weren't all 300 pounds. Her mantra was, eat, eat, you're too skinny. So uh, at Grandma's house, we would eat, eat. What was really interesting is Grandma had these two huge, huge gardens. And so her and Grandpa would grow all their own fresh fruits and vegetables in their gardens. And then they would spend hours and hours and hours canning that stuff um, so that we'd have everything ready for the winter and have everything frozen and they wouldn't have to buy very much at the grocery store. Um, they, they did the same where they would buy chickens fresh from somebody and butcher them and then freeze those as well. So they were very um, 
they just knew how to do things the right way. But more so than anything, they knew how to love. And I think one of the things that I remember the most about Grandma and Grandpa is they slept in the same bed together for all 65 plus years of marriage. And I think this is kind of a rare occurrence nowadays. I think people just decide that their sleep is more important and they can't put up with the snoring or they can't put up with whatever it may be that that, that person annoys them with. And they're still married. They just have separate bedrooms or they have separate beds or things like that. Grandma and Grandpa, they, they shared the same bed. And when they would sit together on the couch, and we're talking to little old people, they would sit together on the couch and Grandma would reach over and she was always holding Grandpa's hand. She'd reach out and hold his hand or she had to have her hand on his knee or sit right next to him to where their, their thighs were touching. They were just always right next to each other. And they would pick on each other. Of course they picked on each other. Um, that was just their thing, but it was playful picking. I never saw them mean to each other which was interesting growing up. This was my example of what I grew up with, of seeing this loving, very loving and tender relationship. And I think we've lost so much of that in relationships to where it's just, it's easy to give up. But one of the things that I've really learned from them in the relationship was that they had a mutual respect for each other. They loved each other. They respected each other. They treated each other with respect. They knew... Um, they, they had a lot of, um, they just cared a lot about each other because they knew that each of them brought something to the table, that, that each of them was doing, playing their equal part in the relationship. And I think that we forget that now in relationships. And, and, and I come from a place of, of obviously, um, being in relationships where it was just easier to walk away, but I also had chosen the wrong people. And that comes down to also um, your choices and, and, and how quickly you rush into relationships and if that person's right for you, if that person's not right for you. But Grandma Anna and the hummingbirds, she had flowers all around her house because she loved hummingbirds. And the flowers that she planted around the house would attract the hummingbirds. And so that's where my story is going. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful person, beautiful, beautiful love story, an example for anybody about what true love is that can last a lifetime and, you know, that they can be together forever and that they can set an example from their, for their children, their grand grandchildren, their great grandchildren um, of, of really what true love is. And now even, you know, several years after my grandmother has passed and, and I miss her, as you can see in this video, I've gotten quite choked up every time I talk about Grandma Anna. I miss you. And I wish you were here. You'd be proud. And I love you. But every time I see a hummingbird, that's my grandma Anna. And they show up at the craziest times when I'm always confused, when life seems to get me down a little bit, and when I need when I need a sign from God that things are okay, for some reason a hummingbird shows up. So because I understand that and if you believe in this, you know, if you don't, I, I'm sure you won't resonate with this. But if you do believe in it, I believe those are our little messages from the ones that we love, that they love us back, that they're still there watching over us and supporting us, and that every step that I take in my life to do what's right when I walked away from a job that was a really good job because I wanted to do what was right in my soul, what was right with my heart, I believe these are things that were instilled by my grandparents, um, by somebody like my grandma Anna. So in lots of love and gratitude, that's today's vlog, I want you to think about 
who your hero is, who has helped you on your journey, who could help you on your journey, who's maybe carved you into the person that you have become, who has created the legacy, and send them, whether they're here now, tell them now that they're your hero. And if they're not here, send them light and love and let them know through prayer that they're your hero. So I apologize for getting all choked up, but lots of light and love to you today. Who is your hero? Find out who they are and let them know whether they're here or not. And I want you to take this healing journey to heal yourself beautiful and express gratitude to those that have made you who you are. So I love you and please come back. Visit me on www.healyourselfbeautiful.com and I look forward to you um, coming back to see me again. Have a wonderful day.